Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. Birthday number five, life path five. People strongly associated with the number five. The best way to learn how to trust yourself is to stop running from the silence and become one with it. When you become one with the silence, you will realize like a domino effect that starts to benefit all of your life. Like for me personally, whenever I address my eating, my whole life benefits. Like you know, because I escape reality through eating. Like that's my drug of choice. So when I am eating horribly, I feel horrible. I have no energy and no motivation to do anything. And I escape my everyday into my eating. And basically that's my excuse for not doing anything. And then I feel like crap and I don't feel good about myself. So it's like, it just, things just, it just, it's just not good. So with your need to, you know, for constant stimulation, like becoming one with silence will basically be that domino effect that positively affects the rest of your life. Because being one with silence will help you to basically not quiet your mind, but redirect your attention. So instead of your mind having a million and one thoughts at a time to where you're distracting yourself from yourself, instead you bring your awareness to your body or different things within your your body, your breathing, the sensation happening against your skin because the wind is blowing or just observing the silence. And if you hear something you don't want to hear, instead of panicking and thinking about that different thing, just It's like sitting back and watching clouds go by, you know, it's like the clouds are going by instead of stopping and start imagining what that cloud looks like and who it reminds you of. Just you notice the cloud, let it go by. So it's like the thoughts are happening within you. Just let them keep happening. Just become a witness. Don't add to them. Don't take away from them. It's like you're sitting with someone who likes to gossip. And they bring up, you know, someone who you really care about, you know, instead of defending the person or adding to it, just don't say nothing. Just listen to them, you know, with you not engaging in the conversation, they're going to have to stop speaking unless something is interestingly wrong or going on with them. They'll keep chatting without you even engaging. And that's fine. You just witness after a while they'll catch on that you're not engaging, you're not feeding into this, and they'll have to stop. They'll tell you they'll call you back because they don't feel like they have your attention anymore. When they have your attention, you're just being a witness. You're not participating. So you witness your thoughts. You know, you witness your thoughts. You don't participate when you're sitting in silence. The more you do this, you know, and the more you bring your attention to your breathing or becoming a witness of certain emotions and don't panic when you witness these emotions, just witness them, just become aware because our emotions and even our mind is like children in the sense that it wants our attention so bad. Like your mind, say you're in bed and you're trying to get some sleep. Your mind will make you think that everything is an urgent matter that you need to, like all of a sudden at two in the morning, you might think, oh my God, I haven't watered the plants in weeks. I need to water the plants now. Like, I mean, you haven't watered them in weeks, so watering them now or in a few hours when you wake up is not going to make a difference. But the mind is so good at making everything seem so urgent. So you bring your witness to it. It's like a child that wants to play with you so badly. And it's like you give your attention to the child. And when you give your attention to the child, the child gets bored and wants to do something else. So you become a witness of the way you feel so urgently, the way you feel the urgency to do whatever. You, You witness that feeling within yourself. 
but you don't engage with it. You don't exchange energy with it. After a while, it has to move on. So challenge yourself to start becoming a witness. Challenge yourself to become one with silence. I was going to say challenge yourself to defeat silence. No, you don't want to defeat your silence. But challenge yourself to become one with silence. So maybe every day you might say 30 minutes is you know, where most people might meditate. Or not even 30 minutes, 15 minutes. Every day for 15 minutes, you sit in complete silence. You might be a five and say, I sit in silence all the time. You probably have a strong number seven in your chart somewhere, but the number five solely. Sit in silence for 15 minutes every day where you just sit there and you just observe, observe your monkey mind, observe how it's like a trickster, a child dying for your attention. And also observe that your mind is just a tool when there is something else within you that is witnessing your mind. So in the process of witnessing that, the mind will have no, will no longer have as much power over you. And then that will limit your need for stimulation because your need for stimulation, whether it's drugs or sex or alcohol or however you escape your reality, those will become limited and those won't have power over you anymore because instead of getting using those things to um, stimulate you or numb you from your, yourself, you're becoming better at sitting with yourself, being one with yourself and not judging the different thoughts and emotions and you know images that are coming in your head. You just witness without judgment. That's going to help you to take control over your need for stimulation, becoming this witness. And then the next thing is journaling. You know, you might start keeping a record of your different thoughts or premonitions or idea. You witness them and you write them down. Don't add to them. Don't take away from them. Just write them down. If you're a writer, maybe you want to incorporate them in your story writing, you know, but start recording them. You might find that your premonitions are accurate and you sense things and they happen. This is going to help you to become more confident within yourself because you realize that it is just not mindless chatter happening in your mind. You might realize that you're telepathic and you're picking up on things that people far away are trying to communicate to you, but they just, you know, they didn't pick up the phone yet or they didn't send that text yet, but you felt it. And when they told you the time that they thought it, you realize that's the time that you felt it. You know, so you'll start trusting yourself and realizing that there is a method to what you may have perceived as madness. So yes, you becoming a witness and becoming one with silence at least five to 15 minutes every day and then upping it more and more will help you to not find the need to escape your reality. And then through the journaling, the journaling will help you to basically start recording your thoughts like I said, you don't add to them. You don't take away from them. You just write them down. And then the next thing that is extremely important is goal setting. You want to start setting goals, but you want to be realistic about the goals that you set, like in the sense that, you know, you don't want to bombard yourself with 10 goals for the day. Out of the 10, you might pick the three that is extremely important and out of the three that is extremely important, which one has the biggest impact and which one is the most annoying and challenging? You knock that one out first and you'll feel so good about yourself for knocking that one out. And as you become a witness, you'll see how it's, you'll be able to witness when you're about to basically suddenly and unexpectedly change your mind and you realize it wasn't sudden and unexpected. You were triggered. You know, you saw that and think, maybe I'll go do this. And instead you stop yourself and say, no, let me finish this first. And then I'll get to that at some point where when you're done finishing this, you probably totally forgot about that and don't even go in that direction anyway. So yeah, become a witness, become a witness, journal and set attainable goals, set small goals for yourself and observe yourself and basically redirect yourself as much as you can until you achieve those goals, whether it's through alarms or whatever it is that you do, you know, you achieve those goals. The more you are able to do these things is the more you'll start to trust yourself. 
Number five, if you are still here with me, please drop me a green heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.